This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Uh, well, first off, I'm just glad we got the game in. You know, we really needed to throw Fisher and, uh, you know, Faraday, you wanted to get him an inning, Coyle an inning or two. And then uh, obviously Cooper at the end was really good. It was it was just good that uh, obviously we moved the game up a couple hours and it allowed us to to get a, get get it in and and get some work and and then obviously won the game so that's that's big uh, but uh, you know some timely hitting you know they only walked us four or five times but we you know put together a couple innings uh, I really like the way we we kind of punched back there when they hit the two run homer off Coil and all of a sudden it's four to two you know all of a sudden it was it was tied again and the wind's blowing out you never know what can happen and. For us to come in, and I think we, uh, Wagner hit a leadoff homer, and and we ended up scoring three more. It was, it was just good to see. So uh, good midweeks, you know, work for us, and uh, get to kind of shift back and get focused to uh, looking at the SEC and and heading over to Alabama. So, Dave, who's your weatherman? Because, I mean, they were spot on today. They announced that it was a lightning delay about two minutes after you walked off the field. Yeah, well, we were worried about that lightning delay because it was we knew it was coming. Uh, we we had Roy standing in the dugout with us down there kind of telling us that, you know, it was getting close. We might have 20, 15, 20 minutes. That was a guess. And probably about what we had left. That was in the uh, – maybe in the seventh – something like that that it ended up being a little bit longer than that so uh yeah again it was you know yesterday when we played the first game it didn't look like we had a chance today then when the game was over it, it, you know it was reported to both of us that now it just came out that there was a little bit of a break possibly from 12 to 3. Uh, but we looked at maybe starting at 12. We just didn't know if we could get everything flipped by then. We said, let's just take a shot and start at one. And, uh, yeah, it worked out. What are your thoughts on, on how you did offensively? Because you scored eight runs, but then also, you know, a lot of left on base. Yeah. The, well, I mean, I can – I'm going to be positive with it. We did a great job of getting on base. We drove in eight runs or scored eight runs. But, you know, you take a step back and – on a really good day, we could have scored maybe scored 14 or 15 runs. And, you know, maybe we're saving those for the weekend or for down the road. But uh, I do like the way that we fight and we get pitch counts up. And, you know, we take a walk, uh, get hit by a pitch, whatever. Um, but, but you know, we were a few big hits away from blowing the thing open. We just – we didn't really – we didn't really do that. Dave, what did you think of Fisher's start today? I thought he had good stuff. You know, he, he had some borderline pitches that didn't go his way. Um, you know, the one hitter had like a 12, 15 pitch at bat, it seemed like, that maybe cost him another inning out there. But uh, I thought he was pretty good. You know, early, it seemed like he got ahead of some guys, 0-2, 1-2. And then, you know, he didn't get a pitch. There was a nibble here, nibble there. Next thing you know, it's 3-2. Pitch count got up a little bit. Um, you know, for the most part, he got him out. He ended up walking three, I think, and uh, you know, he cleaned that up a little bit. And he he has a a really good outing, uh, but it was good outing. He uh, threw sixty five pitches. Does that maybe take him out of the picture this weekend, or could he maybe go Sunday? Or yeah, we'll we'll look at it tonight and then in the morning, and you know, probably look at it again on you know on Friday game day because we don't have to turn the lineup in, I'll be our roster in until you know we meet at home plate. So we'll just. Figure out who's where. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You might have somebody come up sick. Somebody, something's going on. So, uh, but you know, there's possibility he'll be on on this weekend. And then Coyle, how nice was it? They jumped on him pretty quick, and then he kind of he still gave you two wins. Just how nice was it to see him respond like that? Yeah, that was good. You know, the first guy singles up the middle. Um, you know, he leaves slider in the middle of the plate to a left hand hitter left on left, and he hits it hard. I mean, it, that guy drove in all three of the runs they scored this. In the, in the two game series with a two run homer and a solo yesterday. So um, I thought he threw the ball good. You know, it seemed like the, the second inning he, he threw the ball better, had a little more velocity on his fastball, has maybe the sinker working a little bit. And, uh, you know, he's hard to hit when he, when he, when he hits his spots. Uh, 
you know, the, the single over the shortstop's head was supposed to be the ball was supposed to be down the dirt. I think it was about one, two count. And it was in a little bit. He didn't get the barrel big time on it, but he left it up where he got it over the shortstop's head. If, if he bears it, might get a ground ball or strike out. So stuff was good. So you're 19 and one with Stovall in the lineup. Uh, and he went four, four for four today. So I, his impact has been, I guess, uh, something. I'm still mad at the game we lost when he was in there. You know, I mean, I was kidding. No, he's done a great job. He, you know, like I said, he, he changes the dynamics of our lineup. It's, you know, it's for you got a left handed bat, you got some power, you got a guy who can hit for average, run the bases, can drive runs in second, third, fourth time around. It, uh, you know, it's kind of a spark plug there. So, uh, you know, we're playing well and he's, he's really contributed to it. I'm curious if you know the new Bama coach, Rob Vaughn, much and what yeah. you've seen of them this yeah. year. I don't know Rob real well. Um, he's he's more of a, you know, a guy that um, my assistants know real well from being out on the road with him because he was in the longtime assistant. Um, I know they got off to an extremely hot start. They got some good players that were still in the program. When he got the job, he brought some with them. They got into the portal and got some. And, uh you know they've been they've been solid. So um, heard nothing but good things about him. I guess just from your vantage point, both of those plays that Will Edmondson made in center field today. Yeah, I mean they were both really good plays. The ball that was hit into left center, you know the the wind. It was a left-handed hitter. Hit it, it was kind of slicing, slowed it down for him a little bit. Um, you know, he closed on it well, made a great play, a great diving catch. The one, to, the, the line drive to center, I got a little nervous on that one. He didn't catch that ball, could go to the wall for a, maybe a triple or maybe a home run. You never know. But, uh, you know, he, he he made the play. And uh, bottom line, make the play and great effort. I guess, how have you seen him grow in his ability to both play left and center for you, depending on where you need him yeah, in the lineup? You know, I think when he first got here, he's more of a corner guy and, He's, he's taken some, you know, a lot of reps in center field, working out there pregame, um, he, just working on getting a jump on the ball. You know, there's a lot of room in center field. Sometimes it's easier to play than the corners, honestly, as far as reading the ball off the bat. You just have a lot of room out there, and uh, I think he's done a really good job. He's a lot better outfielder than when he walked in the door. Kind of going off of that with him playing center well these last couple of days, Souza getting some starts at third base, even Peyton Holton right field. Just how important are those developments to, I guess, give you some more options on the weekend of how you want to go about this lineup? It does. You know, if, if somebody's not playing well, doesn't feel good or doesn't match up well against the the opposing team's pitcher, you know, gives you some options to move some guys around. And it, again, it's kind of just – a little competition amongst teammates as well. Keeps guys working hard, keeps them on their toes. Kind of what's been going on with our pitching staff a little bit. And when they get in, they, they're going to give you a really good effort. And uh, But it's good to see guys getting better. And you're seeing that, you know, they're not one-dimensional. They can play other positions. And it, it gives us some in-game options, too, to pinch hit or, you know, do something where you don't worry about losing a lot of defense or, carrying yourself out of doing it, you know, because they go out and show you that they can play other positions and get it done. You don't have a problem doing it. Jake Barry's now strung together three really good outings in a row, really good last Tuesday. Just do you feel like he's kind of turned the corner? I mean, he's had good outings for you before, but it seems like he's been a little bit, you know, a little bit better these last few weeks. Yeah, we felt that way after his last out outing. Um, you know, he throws that, that cutter about 90 miles an hour. and It's, you know, they're thinking it's fastball and it just runs away from those right-handers and, He's done a really good job. It's good to see him throw well, you know, at least three times in a row now. And I, I think that mentally now he's he's ready to go. Y'all have given up, I think, just five runs across the last five midweek games. And now, you know, by being the mix along with Colin Fisher, I mean, taking out the weekend rotation, how does this, your midweek options this year kind of stack up to maybe some of the better rotations you've had? Well, it, it gives you an option when you got guys that are pitching on a Tuesday or a Wednesday to, you know, take take a little uh, – well, it takes a little pressure off us on midweek games, obviously, because usually when you run into problems, you don't pitch well in the midweek. And, you know, if you're going to win a lot of games, you got to have – got to have four or five starters. Um, 
I bet, you know, those midweek guys, they're getting ready to pitch on the weekend one day, whether it's out of the pen or start or somebody needs a break or somebody's sick or somebody's not throwing well, you just, you know, skip them midweek and let them throw on the weekend. So, you know, I've always mentioned too, you know, you get into regionals, you get into certain play, and sometimes you got to play another game and you don't, you don't feel like you're throwing a reliever out there, you know, to, to go get it. You've you got a lot of experience start and go start, give us five innings and we'll go from there. But yeah, those guys have done a tremendous job of getting us into games. You know, last year, maybe the year before, we had good teams. We beat you on the weekend, but the midweek was a little scary there for a while. And, you know, we find ourselves down two, three, four runs and one, two innings midweeks. You know, this year, not so much. And uh, it's because we we got guys that can pitch. You had a, you had a lot of regulars uh, take a day off. Uh, but he even started all 31 games for y'all at short. Is that just the way he's wired and the way y'all have talked about using him? Yeah. You know, I talked to him the other day about taking a day off. He started laughing. You know, that's what he does. He'll laugh at a little bit when I give him a hard time. And he said he doesn't want to take a day off. And, uh, you know, I could put Sousa over there, could put Sprague Lot over there, but kind of rest in Sprague Lot for a couple of days, getting ready for the weekend. And, uh, you know, if if I feel like he's not, playing up to what he needs to be playing and I'll give him a day off, but he's, he's strong. He wants to play. And uh, I really didn't want to take him out of the lineup because he's starting to get it going offensively where he's laying off borderline pitches early in the count. He's taking his walk. I think he walked twice today. And, and he's also hitting the ball extremely hard today. He had a sack fly yesterday. He tried to break my window. I mean, he's, I don't want to slow him down. I want to, I want to get him grooving. So we hit the weekend. He's, he's feeling good about it. If Alabama doesn't change its rotation, you'll see Hess on Friday. I know you've faced him a couple of times before. What do you remember? He's good. You know, he's good. You know, you know, velocity fluctuated a little bit. Um, he's throwing really hard early in the year. I don't know uh, if he's, if he's sticking with that, but uh, you know, I don't, I really can't go into detail right now. I'd have to kind of go back and look at some stuff on him, but he's, he's very talented. Like all the SEC Friday night pitchers, man, you got to, you gotta you gotta hit some mistakes and try to put together some good at bats and score. Do you anticipate you'll keep the same rotation this weekend? Yeah, I anticipate that. <laughs> Dave, we didn't see Dylan Carter these last two games. Do you have any update on him? Yeah, he's still still not hundred percent. So we're 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 gonna take our time with him, see how it goes. And um I don't know if he'll be on the twenty seven. He's traveling with us, but I don't know if he'll be on the twenty seven this weekend yet. Do you have any update on Deets from yesterday? Or No, he had an x-ray today. I just know that that looked fine. But he's going to get an MRI tonight and kind of find out. So he does have, you know, there's some pain in there. So we're going to figure out. It's 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 in different spots, though. It's uh, it's it's oh, it's a mystery right now. we got to figure it out. So that's why we're going all out to figure this out as fast as we can. I guess this weekend will be the midway point in conference play. I feel like people use the term peaking too early all the time. Is that like a thing you think about or something you're no. cautious of, of just trying to keep your team? I mean, you guys players, I, I don't think we're near what we're going to be. I think we can be a lot better than we are. You know, maybe maybe not on the mound so much, but offensively, one through nine, I think our lineup can be stronger. And we're 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 tough outs. We take walks and we have runners on, but we got guys that – are going to swing the bat better. I really believe that. So uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, wouldn't even think we're close to peaking yet. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.